What is up? What is up, Dale? What's going on, man? How you doing today? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. Another day in the office, you know. <laughs> That's where is your office? Is your office in a in a yeah? Where is your office? Yeah, it's it's in my basement. So okay. Yeah, I saw that that picture of your daughter coming in and throwing a pillow at your head. So I was like, it can't be it can't be out of the house because unless yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah, she likes to ambush me from on occasion. So yeah. That's awesome. That's well, awesome. Man, thanks so much for coming onto my channel today. I'm yeah, of course. Uh, I love your content. You're cranking out just some great content. And this is some of Thank the you. favorite content to make is talking to other content creators. I mean, what's cooler than that? Because um, we all sort of, this is sort of new, sort of a new concept, right? Is like vlogging about boots. And so right, right. we all, ha we all have to sort of like come at it from our own approach and our own angle. And uh, so that's why it's so cool to like link up, share yeah. ideas you know i'm i'm, I'm stuck because i haven't talked to anybody in months so i'm you know i'm just a hermit i sit in this room alone so it's really I'm talking to my baby a lot and he's just like Bleh! and that's you know it's not conversation is limited right right i, I can i can relate yeah, so. <laughs> well, congratulations by the way for those of Thank you, you. Who don't know uh william here is a new father so yeah 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 uh i have a son his name's asher and he's about he's six months old like right right around now um okay so yeah, it's been it's been awesome. Cool. Been man. Awesome. Oh man, yeah. you know I don't talk about it enough on my channel, but it is the best job you'll ever have. No, yeah, no lies. It's you know fatherhood is the most fulfilling thing, and I, I feel like unfortunately, you know, in recent decades they've they've really sort of uh, come to like sort of attack the family unit and stuff like that. So it's always good to see people prosper. Yeah. I you know I got like a buddy one of my good friends and he's like he's like yeah it's just I don't think I'm gonna have kids because it's overpopulating the planet I'm like dude every single one of us it you know it was a kid like a baby like how do how does yeah. humanity go without procreation that's like a very basic thing like how did that become weird or bad I don't right. know, I don't get how that became bad yeah uh, but uh, I completely yeah. agree yeah there, there's this big push of you know obviously depopulation and all that we don't have to get too conspiratorial but uh, no, i want to get conspiratorial let's maybe okay. you know if you want to at the end like i'm i'm all in i got i got a good this is a little teaser for for the audience at the end i got i would like this to be the debut of my my one and only self-made uh conspiracy theory that i have so we could we could save that for the end if we want to um but i do have a nice one uh, Dude, so. don't yes <laughs> I'm a conspiracy nerd. <laughs> okay, good, good. So we'll definitely save some time for that. Very uh, good, very good. Well, before we really deep dive, um, let, why don't we run through, get to know your story a little bit? Um, I I, I kind of want to know a little bit about your your background, your childhood, your professional background. I know that's sort of a, a lot to condense, but like, what was wh where'd you grow up? Well, let, let's start with where'd you grow up? And uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll give you, I'll give you that uh, probably like the three minute or three to five minute uh, ele elevator pitch the whole thing. So I grew up. Uh, I was born in San Bernardino County, uh, California. So I grew up in a little, super small town called Pinion Hills, which is close to Victorville. Um, if if that's like the biggest town nearby, which is also a really small place, um, but it's about like an hour and a half away from LA. Okay. And uh, yeah, just like a super small desert town with like six thousand people, and you know. Uh, so I grew up there. Um, and spent the first 18 years of my life there. Um, eventually went to college and I spent some time in Santa Barbara. That's where I went to school. Um, and but I, I, that's kind of where I started uh, at, at home or when I was like 15, 16 years old, I started writing a lot. Um, so yeah. I was trying to write movies and, and, and things like that. Um, then I couldn't make movies with anyone because like I, I kept trying to make movies yeah. um and nobody like you know people started going off to college and like i just had no one to make movies with anymore so i was like all right i'll just focus on like script writing i'll do that um Interesting. okay eventually like was just writing scripts from and i had, I had some cool like successes I, I won some contests did some stuff where like i got to like travel and and do some cool things as like a as a you know n nothing big but like like um but my biggest claim to fame is i don't know if you know rob riggle he's the guy from um he's in Step Brothers. And he does the uh, the Catalina wine mixer guy. Yeah, so, yeah. So that guy, uh, I made, I wrote a short script. It won a little contest, and then he was like the main actor in in that in my script. So that was like my yeah, that guy, Rob Riggle. Yeah, so he, I like that dude. He's actually pretty based. He he's also in the uh, he's an actor, but he's also a guardsman, I believe, with the army. He was in the Marines. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Yes. Yes. Uh, or some, uh, yeah. So he um, I think he was in the Marines earlier in his in his you know when he was in his twenties or whatever. 
okay yeah he he's i like him he's a cool guy <laughs> yeah so that, that was definitely the that was the pinnacle of my screenwriting career um which was which was ah. very very short-lived and then yeah moved to san francisco um and spent about i guess like six five six years there and i was teaching special ed uh there well, and cool. that was that was like the best job ever it was so fun wow. um probably the best part of that i was the dodgeball coach you know so i i, I had uh we, we played dodgeball a bunch yeah and i never held back you know so i was just like pegging <laughs> i was just like just just beaning these kids with, yeah, and they were special ed kids and i was just beating them with dodgeball so that was i still don't i don't feel bad about that at all that was great that's um good. that's good for them you know yeah yeah <laughs> and actually one of the uh, another funny thing about that is uh, our school focused specifically on uh, we had a big population of kids with dyslexia and we made the t-shirts that said like uh it, it was stern school and it was supposed to say dodgeball team and then we had like a a, a dolphin with a bazooka okay but the people spelled like the our when when i had one of the kids do the design and yeah. they spelled dodgeball wrong and, and we didn't notice so it said like dodgeage ball so it had extra like g in there and so like we played this whole thing and then like one day this one kid walks up and he's like and i was the english teacher so like mm -hmm. I should have caught the spelling, but we had that one kid walks up and he's like, dodgeage ball. And I was like, what are you talking about, Henry? And he's like, dodgeage ball. Yeah. I looked at him, I'm like, oh, dude, this shirt's been spelled wrong this whole time. Like, and then we made a new run of shirts. We kept it the same because we're like, all right, we're gonna, yeah. we're dyslexic and we're going to just own it. And we're going to yeah. we're going to embrace it. Just own it. You know, yeah. that's what GQ says. You know, like if you're overweight, it, it doesn't matter. Still get a tailor fit suit to your body type. It'll it, you got to own your body size, you know, exactly. you know whatever, your, whatever cards you're dealt, you got to own it, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so I did that for about five years and then my wife and I, we wanted to get married and we wanted to, you know, get a house, have a baby and all that stuff. So that was just like completely impossible in San Francisco. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. So we were thinking about places to move. And then at that point, my brother lived in North Carolina, Winston-Salem, which is where I live now. And, uh, yeah. so we just came out here, visited it, really liked it. And then we moved out here probably about four years ago okay. and I was a coffee roaster for, for about a year Ooh. in the interim and Been after my own heart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, then th through that, through that period, that was like when I really started, like I, I was working with a, a website. So there's a website, which, um, it's called the adult man and it's like a men's fashion and self-improvement type website. And I was working with that website, just doing like freelance writing for them. Cool. Um, over the course of like when I was in San Francisco too. So I've been, I've been working with him for like a couple of years. And when I was at the coffee roasting job, I really got bit by like the entrepreneurial bug. And I was like, man, I really want to do something. Um, so I started, you know, just like made it known, like, Hey, I want to do that. I want to write full time. That's what I've been kind of going after since I was 16, you know? And um, so I was able to do that, did that for, you know, did some different like brand partnerships and, and writing stuff there. I kind of learned like the basics of, of, um, digital publishing okay. basically. And, uh, then in 2020, um, like right, right at COVID basically, then everything just kind of shut down. And so I wasn't, I was not really working. I was, I was trying to work, but like brands at that time, you know, in hindsight was not a good decision on their part, but at, at that time, everyone shut off all marketing budgets. And so basically my whole thing was all commission and, uh, Okay. Yeah. So I just stopped. I like was out. I was like done. I was like, Oh man, this is, this is rough. Yeah. Uh, Cause I just started like going out on my own and trying to, trying to do the entrepreneurial thing. So then that's when I was like, all right, I got free time. Mm -hmm. I can't just sit here and do nothing because like, it's just too much to like sit in an apartment and just not do anything. Yeah. And um, you know, at this point I'd had a pair of Thursday captains for a while. And then I'd had a pair and I'd got a pair of Red Wing Iron Rangers. Um, but the Thursday captain was kind of like the first, you know, it it was interesting to me. And uh, yeah, th those are the two boots right there. Nice. And uh, <laughs> they're interesting to me. And I was like, well, like, what if I just started writing about boots? And yeah. I really thought it was, I did not think it was going to be anything. Yeah. I did not think it was going to be anything. So I started doing that put up a couple of videos. Mm -hmm. And at the time I was doing videos for this other, uh, this other website too. And it was just crazy to see how much more like for boots by like how much those videos were, you know, same Getting... amount of effort, but one would be 10 times, get 10 times more views. Wow. And when I say 10 times more views, I'm talking about like, it would get like a thousand views, you know, it was not, um, it, it was, just, but it was just crazy to, I had no perspective, no perspective at all. And right. so I just kind of kept going. Yeah. Um, and, and doing that and kind of doing both at the same time. But mm -hmm. then I think in 2021, it was at the point where I could just like scrape by and, uh, and, and do boots by full time. So wow. awesome. basically since, uh, 2021, 2022, I've been just, you know, just continuing to build, um, and I, I run 
boots by with, with a partner. So it's two of us. Um, and uh, my partner, he, he really works m- mostly on bootsby.com, which is like our, our web, the, you know, the website. So I'm not sure if people catch up with that, but I actually, and I, I want to share a lot about what's going on with bootsby.com, the, the website, but yeah. most people are probably familiar with me from the YouTube channel, because uh, that's definitely the most like public or, or gets the broadest range of, of um, exposure, but yeah. yeah. And then just been building that for the last, you know, like all day, every day. It's kind of crazy to like sit and think about boots. Yeah. Yeah, like well, I never, I never stop. Like I, I want to say like forty hours a week or fifty hours a week, but it's like I, I literally never stop. Like, I, yeah, it's weird. But, but uh, I'm man after my own heart. I can completely yeah. uh, relate to you right now. Yeah. So, so. Your, your partner is that uh, Colione or the the guy on Instagram? I, I just uh, he, he's one of your writers. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Are you, are you saying like where, where did he come in the picture? Yeah. 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 So he, I mean, so he's, um, Michael, Michael Corleone. Yeah. 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 So he's, he's been a, he's, he's a great writer. So he's been working with us for a couple months, probably. There oh, he is. Cool. There's Mike. Yep, so he's there. been working with us for a couple months and, and he just like reached out a couple times on Instagram or I reached out to him. I, I, I can't remember, but we just started talking over Instagram and then I was like, Hey dude, like, you know, it's really cool to find people who, who are passionate about it. And then they're like, also you know, good writers and good photographers, uh, because that's like something where right. I definitely, for, for me, it's like, you just hit a point where you can only do so much. And especially with like a lot of things, um, you know, with like running the actual publishing business. Um, right. yeah. yeah there's... He's also a handsome guy too, which, you know, adds to it. Not that you need to be handsome or anything like that, but, man, but he is, he's a good looking dude. So and he's very smart. Like he, he sends me DMS and like very intricate. He's... Yeah super knowledgeable about leather about lasts about builds so he's definitely a good writer i would say yeah he's- yeah and, that, and that's why i was like i, I you know I want, I want this guy to be on the team because you know he like knows more than me about all this stuff like way more way way more and is and honestly like frankly is more passionate about it too which is which is great and that allows me to you know like i, lo- I love having somebody like that on the team because it's like all right my audience is in good hands because this guy right knows what he's talking about Mm-hmm. And is committed to it. And so that I get to focus on like, you know, continuing to grow the business in, in terms of all the back end stuff. And just, you know, like running boots by like this week is, you know, trying to file our partnership taxes and and yeah. do it like just like stuff that you would never think of at all. But it just right. takes a lot of time and to make sure your accounting is spot on and all that stuff. It just takes a lot, takes a lot of time. Yes. Um I can relate. I, I'm so worried about this year's tax season. I'm you know, I'm so worried about it. I, I have a what is it? QuickBooks, I think, through TurboTax that just auto yeah. everything. But like, I'm making leather products and sending it out, and uh, I, I get some commission, so I, I account for that, and I get some ad revenue from YouTube, so I yeah. account for that. But then when I sell someone's boots, I don't know how to file that. Like, is that a commission? Because I send them the money after I sell the boots, but it's it still shows as income on my end. So it's just oh yeah yeah. So yeah, many, yeah. So those are the problems, man. Those are the things. Where you, and then you gotta like sit there and figure out how to do that, so you don't have to like manually go in for if you know you sell 20 pairs of boots over the year like you want to like manually do all that or do you set automatic and like it's yeah. just a it's just a it's a headache it's such but, a headache uh, yeah oh. yeah so those are the those are the things you know that that we deal with on a day-to-day so having someone like mike come on and uh you know just i can feel safe being like oh cool like this dude knows what he's talking about oh, yeah. uh, he's gonna he's gonna give he's gonna do a better job than i am like that's that's yeah. really what i want to find is like people who are better at their specific thing than I am because then the brand just keeps getting better and better. So, yeah, uh, I can understand that. And, you know, also it's, it's a matter of, yeah, like you said, there behind YouTube, there's so many moving parts and it's not just you making a video as the presenter and giving your opinion. It's like, well, then you got to edit and then you yeah. gotta create a thumbnail that I, yeah. I was, I spent a half hour last night trying to figure out a thumbnail for that sock video. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that in and of its forget. Okay. I, I recorded 50 minutes of footage and right, the, right. the end video was 29 minutes. I could have made it shorter even then, but it, it was just so much editing. And then, and then on top of it, so I spent a good, I don't know, probably eight hours editing the thing. And then, <laughs> and then I had to create the thumbnail, like these videos uh, to the audience, they are not easy to make. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. It's, it's so much, so much effort and the editing, editing is, yeah, the editing is, can be brutal. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, and I had a question about that because I edit all my videos in iMovie on my iPhone, so mm. I don't have fancy tools. You edit on your iPhone? Yeah, it's all on my iPhone. Nice. So, 
But w- what what do you use or do or do you like outsource it to somebody else? Because it's like super professional. I mean, y- your stuff is like really, you know, it's top notch professional. Uh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so uh, I outsource it. Um, so I, I have I have a video editor, and he's awesome. Uh, and he's been with us for, for a pretty long time. So or for, for like two years, three years. So that's one of the things where like I got, I, I outsourced that pretty quickly because again, it's, it's one of those things too, where it's like, I can do, I know how to do it, you know, and I, I've done it, but the guy that we use, he's just so like, that's what he does. That's what he like. You know, he enjoys to doing it. He, which means he spends more time per video. Whereas like, I don't, I do not enjoy editing. And yeah. so it's like, a lot of times I found myself just like, how do I get this done as fast as possible? Which is not, you know, when yeah. I, when I, when I zoom out and I go like, well, does my audience want me to spend as little time as possible? Or do they want the information in a, in a as an entertaining and informative way? And it's like, okay, well, and I cannot do this, like, or I should not be doing this. Um, mm-hmm. So then you just kind of bite the bullet and, and and pay the cost so that you can make it better so that people can enjoy it more uh, yeah. and get more out of it. So, so yeah, I outsource it um, and I would not have it any other way. I yeah, you know, I, I hear you. It's such a burden. I actually discovered this new app called Capwing that will take the video and it uses AI, you know, because I'm all about yeah, yeah. Videos, man. Plug me into that thing, man. Stick it, stick it in my brains. <laughs> stick it through my eye sockets. I, I want yeah. that. <laughs> no, just yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's I mean, there's a lot of like uh, new AI tools too that do make it like you can even write it. I think you can do one where you write a script, you read it, and then like you teleprompter it or whatever. And then uh ai will just like and then you say here's the script and then it'll just cut the video down to like here's just what you said so it could be an option for you to to speed things up okay very cool yeah my friend jen she she uh, she brought this one app to my attention that was really good i forget what it was called but i started using it it was phenomenal It, it would it would take your video and then it would script it out and then it would remove all the ums the uhs the the ah, yeah 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 and then it would uh and it would remove repeat words and then you could go through it like in, like the script and delete words and then hit save and then it'll repo- it'll repopulate the video completely all the all the crap edited out and uh but the problem with that was the video formatting sucked like you'd save it and the video would look like washed over uh, yeah that's it's, tough like yeah and and unusable you can't use it and then and then the uh the website itself said oh well you have to maybe find some other software to help re-enhance the video and i'm like i yeah, can't okay. do that yeah. so but Capwing, i actually pay for it but it'll take a 30 minute video and it'll auto it just edits out all the blank spaces so a 30 minute video it'll condense into 21 minutes and then nice. i work with that now so yeah. it, it saves me probably 30 percent of editing time That's nice. but it's still editing is still just such a pain <laughs> yeah yeah for sure yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah, but you know, we all learn, we all grow. Um, I, I, I grapple with that question question as well. It's like, does the audience just want me to put this thing out and not overlay photos, not overlay other videos, or do they want me just to see me just sitting there talking about the boots? Just yeah. You know, well, I, mean, I think what's interesting is like you know, even even the same person, I think they go to different creators for their particular style. So there there is an element of like. You know, I, I mean, I, you know, I'll just speak personally. Like I'm trying to, you know, I try to evolve our style and make it a little more unique and and make it a little a little different from what's already out there. Uh, and that's something I've actually been focusing on a lot more in the last like two months. I have we we've only put out one video in the last two months, um, so we've been really like much more quiet on that front than than usual. But it's really been from a like a philosophical standpoint of like, okay, how do we how do we do something that's that's a little different? You know, I think like you know, Roseanne Bill, he does he does an awesome job and does like the really good objective like views of the insides of boots and like yeah. you can't argue with that. That's you know, he's he's just cutting that stuff in half. Right. Uh like Nick Stridewise, he does a really good job at um I'm just gonna do it now. Screw it. I'm just gonna become Roseanne <laughs> <laughs> Just watch out for your hand, you know. You don't wanna you don't wanna do a gash in there. Exactly. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, Nick does a good job, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry. Go. Sorry. Go on. Oh yeah. He, he's. I'm jealous of him because he just travels the world. He. Yeah. That, that's like a, such a cool perspective, you know, that 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 people get to see because he, he's out there. Yeah. Um, like a dream come true. I would love to go to Indonesia and meet all those makers and just like spend a month and just meet them and hang out in their shops and yeah, make make boot videos. Like yeah, yeah. that would just be my dream. Like. <laughs> Yeah, that's it is awesome. So, you know, he he brings his perspective which is really unique and really cool. And yeah. so, but there's, you know, there's 
there's not that many boot YouTubers out there. Um, so it's kind of like, there's just a lot of room to be different. You know, there's a lot of room to, when I think about like, if you're trying to compete with Mr. Beast or whatever, uh, or like be an entertainment YouTuber, it's like, you know, yeah. there, there's like a, there's, there's, everything's been covered uh, pretty much. Yeah. So, but with like, you know, with boots, it's like, all right, there's a lot of room to, to do something. So I've been working a lot on, all right, how do we, how do we be a little bit different and how do we play to my strengths? Um, right. That is a, a little unique. So anyway, that's like a long way of saying that basically like for you, you know, like if you're just sitting down and talking about boots and people consistently come back and watch that, then it's like, that's your style. You know, that's what works for you. Um, I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and you're right. I've been, I've been going down the deep dives in U different UFO channels on YouTube. One of my favorite is Richard Dolan and uh, Jeremy Corbell. He does really good work. Um, but you're right. Each one does something different. Like Richard Dolan takes the more academic professor approach. Mm. Whereas um, uh, Jeremy Corbell, he's like our age and he's like, he speaks our language. He actually gets yeah. the culture. He's not out of touch. He's not some boomer. And so when he's interviewing these people, he's able to, he's able to translate like all this advanced, you know, technology, metamaterial, right. whatever anomalous activity in the skies. He's able to translate that into layman's terms for like guys like us. And so yeah. what you're saying, I agree. I, I don't think um, any one person should be the monolithic like source for boot information. Um, I think that honestly, the more, the better I'd like to yeah. see YouTubers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm trying to encourage my friends, dude, just start your own channel, start your own podcast. Like I, I, I can't shoulder all this myself. Like, uh, you know, I'm drowning in projects and, and there's so much ground to cover. Like, and that's why I commend you. Like, yeah, I completely agree with your uh, assessment that, yeah, just, just be yourself, be different. Uh, you will eventually gather a following, you know, like my buddy, Mike Smith, like he's, he's so smart. Uh, you know, I have to, when I'm editing my videos with him, I'm, it's just a, it's a fire hose of information. I'm like, mm. oh, it, it's, it's more than I can even digest in one sitting. Yeah. <laughs> so and, and that's, that's what I love. That's why I love talking to other people. Cause it's like, I get their perspective and I, I get their, you know, I I'm, I'm not educating the audience. I'm educating myself actually with right. Right. <laughs> you're just documenting. You're just documenting it. Yeah. I'm documenting my education process and all of this. So, so dude, that's really cool. Yeah. You also have the, the channel that cooler spy. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's awesome that you found that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I, I found it. It was like, um, one of your videos on there has like millions of views or something. It was like, yeah. wildly, it went viral. Um, I forget which one it was, um, but you basically cut, two coolers in half. Yeah, I, took, I went, I went Rose Anvil, but on coolers. So I just cut coolers in half. Ooh. turns out coolers are like the exact same on the inside. Uh, I mean, I guess there's, there's small differences, but it's not nearly as interesting as, as cutting a boot in half where there's like actual like layers and different things going on. Like cut a cooler in half is foam in there. It's foam <laughs> baby. So, <laughs> but, uh, you're not all, you know, different companies in their labs trying to figure out better technology. It's like, no, there is, there is some of that. There is some of that. And I did, learn about foam um but oh, i don't there, yeah. there's not there's not too much to say other than basically yeah there's not much, not too much to say but there's there are differences in foam okay i got gotcha. you very cool i had no idea i mean yeah, yeah it, it's super cool though yeah i mean um do you have any other channels or like well you obviously you have projects going on beyond just the channels uh right. you have camel city mill socks yeah which, Love those socks. Um, I hope I did awesome. them justice in the in the video. Yes, yes absolutely. That was that was a, that was a. I, I was very pleased to see that. That was awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Um, re regarding my one critique, which was yeah. just the, the color scheme. Do you, yeah. do you have plans to diversify the color spectrum on it? Yeah. Yeah. So that's a. That, it's been so that uh, about last year, beginning of last year, we started Camel City Mill. And that has been, and so that's the first time I've been like selling a physical product. Cool. And that whole process, um, you mentioned over text, like you wanted to like the, the design and how, like how that came about. So I'd love to cover that and, and discuss that. Um, but in terms of just like what's, what's coming, I guess for now. So yeah, it's been, that's been such a fun and difficult project. It's definitely the hardest thing I've ever worked on in my life. Um, because it's just so like, I, it requires a different way of thinking, um, you know, and, and the, bet you have to take is is bigger because you have to like you know buy the stuff before you sell the stuff and you have to you know i i remember placing that first order and being like i don't think i'm gonna sell a single pair like this is uh this is a terrible decision and then the next day you're like wait a minute this is genius like i'm gonna 
<laughs> want to be a billionaire or whatever. And then like, yeah, it's just like, it just fluctuates so much. Okay. But, um, but, I, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry I, could, sorry. I could totally relate. Um, I'll spin you around real quick. I'm not sure if you could see the, uh, the hides. Oh have... yeah. Man. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's not all of it. It, it. I have leather stashed everywhere. Yeah. It, you know, if, if somebody didn't know it was cowhide, they'd assume I was some sort of mass serial killer. Or yeah, something yeah. Like that. But um, I completely agree. My first order of leather, I got it from Acadia Leather. They sell buy four sides, get the fifth free. So I, it was okay. like almost it was like five hundred fifty dollars, and I was like sweating. I'm like, yeah, I could stomach that for boots, but like I don't know if I'm gonna sell anything. Any, yeah, uh, yeah. But which, thank- which is also just kind of scary too, because you're like, oh, I wanna I wanna make leather backpacks. I right. wanna make a bag. Like, yeah, that's what I want to do. And then if you put it out there and you get zero takers, you're like, ah, is my is my dream bad? Like, do I have a bad dream? Like, should I, you know, I don't know. It, it, it faces you. That's the scariest part. I mean, the putting out the, the money is, is frightening. Um, but like, and, 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 you know, you, I think you just like learn to stomach that, I guess. Absolutely. But, but in terms of like the, the real scary part is like, this is my idea. And, you know, I can see it going this direction. And then when you put it out into the world, uh, you, it is really exposed to like either that vision you have is just could just die. It could just immediately be dead on arrival. And then you have to like start over from square one. Oh, um, yeah. that's so true. That is so yeah. true. Yeah, it, it, it's the it's the ultimate humility test, too. Right. Yeah. You're actually truly exposed when you create a product. It, it's it's a very it's almost like being naked in the wilderness sort of a feeling mm-hmm. like you don't know if you're going to find shelter. You don't know if you're going to be able to build a fire. You don't know if you're yeah. going to find food. You yeah, know? I mean, I think that's one thing that I really learned because um, I was trying to do fiction writing for for years and years. So from probably like 22 to 26, when I was 22 to 26 or 27, so about five years, I really attempted to be a fiction writer. And, uh, you know, I'd go to all these writing groups. I would wake up. I mean, I, that that's one of the things that I started waking up at four in the morning to get writing, to write, you know, my three, four pages before going to work. And uh, that taught me just to like show up every day and write every single day. But one of the things that I I saw from a lot of people and kind of came to grips with was the scariest thing about trying to be a writer or anything like that is that when you put it, when you, when you submit it to a publisher and then they say no, and then you submit it to 20 publishers and they say no, like you have to admit that you're not good or that you're doing something wrong or that you're, you're faced with like that. If you really try and you fail, then it means you have to like reconstruct your whole identity and, and your, your identity of like, Oh, I'm going to be a, I'm going to be a famous writer or whatever. Like you have to ditch that. Like you can't imagine that anymore. You you can't, you have to stop imagining that scenario. And I yeah. saw so many people myself included where like, I didn't want to give that up. I didn't want to give up that part of like this, this is my, my hope, you know, I don't want to give that hope up by like actually really trying. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, so I think I think doing a physical product is a lot like that, where you well, you you, you know you have to risk giving up that hope that you have, which is like you know which is which is uh, something. It's exactly. Definitely- yes, I mean you're truly almost fighting for your survival every day. Every day mm-hmm. is another test. You know, it's not like. But I do have a suggestion if you if you do want to become a famous writer. Um, all you have to do is go to this little get together called the Bohemian Grove. Uh, I'm not sure if you've heard of it. <laughs> is that the secret? <laughs> yeah, that's that's one of those. Uh, th- that's where all the elite politicians go. And uh, oh, nice. Well, I'll just go. I'll just go then. Yeah, yeah they, they, they do all kinds of well uh, questionable rituals over there. They burn human effigies, and uh, I don't want to get too. I don't want to reveal too much. But anybody who's interested in the Bohemian Grove or knows what I'm talking about. That is what I'm saying is that uh, that's that's where you actually get the hookup is uh, it's kind of oh, like a, it's a it's a sell your soul type deal. Yeah, it is. And where where is that upstate New York or where do I go for that? It's in California. <laughs> oh, it's in Cal- oh, of course. Yeah, All right. I know that place. I got All right. I'll show up. I, I think you have to be invited. Uh, I'm not I'm not exactly sure, but it's it's kind of like the Jeffrey Epstein honeypot sort of scenario. Yeah. Like you come to the island, uh, you sell your soul, they get you in. they, they take photos of you doing some incriminating things and then uh, and then they got delivered the yeah now you're in the club now we're going to hook you up with all these job opportunities and stuff but don't cross us because we have this stuff we're going to do over here it's right. kind of those scenarios so uh, uh don't sell your soul um yeah. <laughs> I would actually say the it's a testament to your character that um you didn't do that and that you just 
you took the you took the blow and you moved on and you found success somewhere else that's that's how we're actually supposed to do things yeah yeah um but but yeah so to, to, uh, you, you, the, how we got into bohemian grove was you started we, we you asked me about that where camel city's going yes. so uh that's awesome Stocks, um, grove you know yeah. satanic but, it, all, it, it all it all blends together <laughs> um but yeah so one of the, the the first challenge that we've had is that um to honestly just staying in stock which which is awesome that's like a great problem to have mm -hmm. um but it's been such a challenge because we i think we hit on something with with this um with this product which is basically uh for people who don't know it's a merino wool sock for trade workers that's basically what it is so mm -hmm. it's like a it's like a work sock and um there is a lot of and there's a couple like proprietary things in it that make it special uh, mm -hmm. that we spent a lot of time, you know, I was very nervous about launching a product because I knew even, even if it took off and have a, has a life of its own, I knew at least at the beginning there, you know, my reputation is kind of tied up in that. And so mm -hmm. I didn't want to just like put out something that would suck because then like, I have a lot of other big ideas too, and big plans. So it's like, I didn't want to, I didn't want to fork out my reputation for like something small yeah, or what, what do they say? Like, I didn't want to give up the the kingdom for, for a dollar or whatever, you know, what, whatever the, Absolutely. Um, uh, so I, there are, I have bigger things uh, planned. And so I didn't, I, and I knew that and I didn't want to, so anyway, I spent a lot of time like, okay, how do I make this sock actually legit, really awesome, which, you know, uh, that takes, I, I'm a naturally very curious person. And I think you need to be curious because when I look back on the conversations I had going to different sock manufacturers and, and, you know, uh, yarn suppliers and stuff like that. Like I asked the dumbest, most naive questions because I didn't know. Um, and it turns out like that actually, I think worked in my favor. Cause I would ask things like, like, well, how do you make this yarn better? And then they were like, there's no way to make it better. I'm like, there's definitely a way to make it better. Like, how do you do that? And they're like, well, you, if you, if you wanted to, you could do, you know, X, Y, Z. I'm not going to say what, cause that's my, it is my secret. I yeah. asked lots of questions. I worked hard for that, but, You've earned um, it. <laughs> but like, you know, like just being kind of honestly, just like being an idiot, <laughs> like walking be like, they're like, it can't be better. I'm like, well, what do you mean? Like everything can be better. How about this thing? And they're like, well, if, if you really want to, I mean, you, you could do this thing. I'm like, well, that sounds like that'd make it 10 times better. Can you do that? And they're like, yeah, but it's going to cost blank. And you're like, well, I, you let me worry about that. You like, I don't know how to make yarn. Like you know how to make yarn. Yes. You know, like let let's do that. So, um, so that's that. Uh, there's a a lot of that went before we started. Once we started, like the product's good. Then we've been having trouble for the last year staying in stock. And even right now, like I'm going tomorrow to the to the mill to pick up another batch that's going to last another week and a half. And then we have to go again next week. And I I, I keep driving back and forth to the mill to like pick up another you know couple hundred pairs uh, to to sell them. And honestly, it's not really through Boots Buy. Like it, it is starting to take a life of its own. So we yeah. definitely launched off of off of Boots Buy and you know putting in YouTube videos. I'll, I'll continue to do that as well um, because that really is you know it it to me is a, a good way of supporting the channel and, and helping grow the team. And there's a lot I want to I want to tell you about on, on BootsBuy.com that we're that's actually like where most of our effort is going right now is the website. But um, yeah. but now that we're kind of just getting the inventory after a year, it's like a full year of getting the inventory like under control and making uh -huh. sure that we can get it pretty consistently. We're going to start doing different styles, like a, a low cut, um, new colors too. Cool. And then probably towards the end of the year, we'll start doing like, we have a lightweight and a heavyweight. Uh, we'll probably start doing like more specific socks for different trades and for different uh, things. But the audience is, is a little different. It's like Boots Buy, uh, where, we, where we're going is we want to be a little more heritage focused. Um, so, you know, like Grant Stone, Thursday, Red Wing, you know, like go, going more down the heritage route mm -hmm. um, with Camel City. That's almost just like more like work wear focused where it's like the, the audience is a little bit different. Um, yeah. There's a lot of overlap, but there's also like I would talk to them differently. You know, like if I wanted to recommend something to a, a trade worker, it wouldn't be the same, you know, recommendation. And I, I mean, I do that for boots all the time. It's like if you're if you're on a job site, well, then like these are the things you need from your boots. If you're just doing it, if you're like me and you kind of wear it mostly for style, well, then these are the things you're going to want from your boots. Um, so yeah. it's kind of diverging at this point. 
um, which I didn't expect. I didn't anticipate, but it is uh, you know just something. It's the reality. Very cool. Oh man, that's so awesome. Yeah, th- there's there's so many questions I have, but yeah, you're right. I, I think that naivete you were describing it, it gives you like almost the child's approach. And I can't tell yeah. you how my kids come to me with a suggestion that just blows my mind. Like it's like that's genius. Like you know, sometimes that innocence and that yeah. un- leads you to ask just the right question to solve a problem or to create something new. So yeah, what you're saying, like coming at it from an outsider perspective, outsiders have so much insight that you would never expect, you know? So if yeah. you're really inquisitive, I think, I think that's, that's what led you to that, that success. So congratulations on that. That's awesome. Thank you, thank also, you. This is about to time out. So yeah. uh, it's going to make I'll us take out. a 10 minute break. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I'll send you the link when, uh, when I'm able to in, in exactly 10 minutes. So <laughs> And we're back. We are back. All right. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, man. So where were we? We were talking about um, your website and the, sort of the future of your Camel City Mill socks. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I, guess, I mean, I guess the last thing I said was like Camel City Mill, we finally got inventory under control. And we, 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 I understand the demand now uh, mm-hmm. a lot better than I did previously. And so we're, we're uh, yeah, just doing, dude, been driving to so many different suppliers and yeah learning so much about the entire process that's um, fun it sounds like a good like cool adventure get on the road yeah yeah that, that's uh, honestly it's kind of like um so that i mean if you look at it like two different businesses like boots by we'll just call it like publishing in general let's call it like that uh so there's like publishing and then there's e-commerce which is camel city and okay i think e-commerce suits my personality a lot more so i'm really grateful that i have a partner on the publishing side because i think Maybe the publishing suits his personality a little bit better. Yeah. Publishing takes so much patience and it takes so much like consistent, diligent effort applied over a really long period of time, which yeah. I have done, but like I'm I'm much more like, I don't know, hot and heavy. Like e-com is just like you just you you blitz, like you just blitz something and then and then it just go. And you know, and then it take it can take on a life of its own. And then, you know, you just are like exhausted and then you like blitz it again. Right. Um so, and I think that's just, that is just more my personality. Plus I also with publishing, at least the way we've been doing it, this is changing a little bit, but the way we've been doing it has been a lot of just like you're in the office and you're just writing and your head's down and then you're taking photos of yourself and then you're, it, it's just very isolated. Yeah. Um, yes, it is. With e- <laughs> e-com, it's like a lot more like I get to go talk to people and I get to go meet people and, and spend, you know, like that's like where the value gets created is when you are talking to someone who's way more knowledgeable than you in a specific area. And you're just asking them questions. um, And then they tell you like a little nugget and then you're like, Oh, like, you know, as I'm, as a marketer is like, you know, thinking about that from, from my end, like, Oh, I I know exactly how to communicate that in a way that, you know, a manufacturer just would never think of. Um, And I think that's like, that's where the magic happens. Um, Definitely. So, so yeah, I mean, it's been, suits my personality a lot more, I think. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I mean, yeah, it, you're right about the isolationism. Like I, I, sometimes I have four days off in a week and so my wife's at work, my kids are at school and I'm like isolated, like truly just in my house, just working on projects. Like, so I'm going to talk to myself in the camera and then, and then it's not isolated because when you release it, then, you know, hundreds yeah, of people, sometimes thousands talk to some people about it. Yeah. 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 So it's kind of, it, I never thought of it like that. Yeah. Like it's very, I feel like a hermit when I'm recording the videos. <laughs> like yeah. I'm in my cardigan. I got my coffee. I feel like an old man, like just moseying around my house, getting boots yeah. around, sorting things around. And then, and then you release it and then boom, you know, people, people all come to watch it. So it's like, you go from being alone to now all of a sudden all these eyes are on you. <laughs> it's kinda, yeah. yeah kind of a strange uh thing when you think about it like that yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah. absolutely and then, i mean that's one thing i've been I, you know I'm, I'm trying to do it and it's like why i'm you know part of the reason i'm here too is just like I, the first three years of boots by was just totally spent like head down just trying to get enough like a critical mass of content to where people would even know about me or n- know about boots by at all yeah and uh now that we're at that point it's like you know you just naturally start to talk to people because there's more visibility and then it's like oh man like why haven't i been doing this the entire time like so that's part of what i want to do more this year is just you know get more connected into just meeting meeting people and uh and get more connected with the community talk more to people because it's just so like you know 
yeah. I mean, also it's such a it's a it's a relatively very small community and so it's like to not even connect with the, com the small community is like mm -hmm. what are you like then what are you doing like what's the point um yeah so that's definitely something where i'm like i'm excited i'm excited i'm just like excited to talk to you um yeah, yeah. yeah. it's just like cool i i'm I, uh talking to ben at stitch down i definitely want to go to boot camp next next year you went to boot camp right yeah i did yeah 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 awesome. and that, that I'm so was, jealous. Yeah, I, I was hoping to meet you there when when we all when we went because uh yeah it was it was like surreal and you'll have a a blast when you go like you will have an absolute blast uh yeah that that's one thing that that I think is important is is the stitch down community you know I I kind of left it for a while just because I felt like I wasn't like I'm. I'm too busy creating content of my own to then get into a chat room and, and, and engage and talk all day. But yeah. I have, I yeah. have friends, friends that do it and, and they like it and uh, I'll get in the chats sometimes, but like, I'm sure you're the same, like my Instagram DMS to all my followers. I'm sorry. I have some messages that are two weeks old that I still haven't gotten to. It's just, there's just so many tasks to do, yeah. you know, the more you do this and uh, just to keep your sanity, like God forbid I have to take my kid to gymnastics one day and I can't, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Get, to, get to the other tasks that I have to get to but um but yeah I think uh I think the community engagement is good because like we were talking about earlier it's good to have many creators I think it's also good to have that community and, and be in touch with that community because yeah it is a small segment of guys that are into boots to begin with that would even start asking questions you know most guys right. just, they go to the mall they buy a boot whatever you know that's they wear it they don't think twice about it but then guys like you and me you know we want to get nerdy with it we want to know about the leather and the makers and stuff and yeah and so that's kind of why i think it's cool when we could all just like get together collaborate this is a community so let's work together let's yeah yeah absolutely because talking absolutely. to each other we learn a ton and we appreciate more you like you know i, I just love hearing your backstory because you know it, it's kind of like if you just find my video and i'm talking about you know all in the indies you don't know anything about me but then right. you know, it's kind of like with musicians it's the more you listen to a band the more you start wanting getting uh inquiring about who they actually are as people and so right. that to me is the sweet spot i like to get to know the people it's it's uh yes i love i love the boots but i also really it's the people that make it that keep me going and all this <laughs> so yeah i i totally I totally agree yeah that's one thing that like yeah, for me, it's just that's what's been missing. I think was just just being so head down creating new content and not yeah. lifting my head up and being like, okay, like who who am I who am I even talking to? Like, it's important to just be like, who am I even talking? Because right. you're right, you're you're talking to a camera, you're yeah. not talking to a person, but yeah. there are you know thousands and in some cases like tens of thousands of actual people on the other side of that camera that yeah. you just never see. So it's like you gotta you gotta get your head up uh, every once in a while and just be like, oh, okay, like, okay, th this is the kind of guy, this is the guy I'm talking to. And, and th these are the, the people, like you have those people in your mind and it makes your content a lot better too. Yeah, um, it, does. it does. But it also just makes you sane. Like it also helps you stay sane, basically. It does. It, it, it grounds you truly, you know, because um, some people, some guys, I have one buddy, uh, Mark, he, he just, he buys random boots from different makers that I've never even heard of. And he mm. just, he's a, he's local and he, he just, he says, Hey, let's meet at Starbucks. I'll give you another pair of boots to review. And I'm like, yeah, I'd love to. I've never heard of that brand, you know, yeah. craft and glory, this Indian brand that I just wrote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, it's like, I, I would never have that opportunity or my buddy Mario sends me boots to review all the time. And some of my other friends, it's, it's, uh, it's, I get to experience even not my own boots, which is cool and cover them and talk about them. And so, so is that how you review so many boots? Is that, that, that yeah. you're saying, I was like, look, I was like, dang, dude, this guy, you like put out like what, two or three reviews. You put out like a lot of, a lot of reviews. I was like, dang, yeah. I must have a billion pairs of boots. But so you, you friends lend you some boots so that you can review them. And that that's one way. Yeah. Lately that's been okay. the case. Yes. That makes sense. Um, and, and that that's greatly enriched my content because um, like I said, I'm, it's so crazy that I've been doing this for, I don't know, five, seven years now. And I've, there's still makers I've never heard of. I'm still following yeah. new boot makers every day on Instagram that I, I just, they pop on my radar after yeah. or so. It's weird, you know, but there's really a lot of boot makers out there and uh, so much ground to cover, which again is why I'm glad, you know, <laughs> there are other boot tubers out there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So have you, um, Speaking of like new brands, what new brands have just popped onto your radar? Like, would you say recently? 
I have been learning more about the Japanese makers, which I wouldn't say it's like not like a new brand or anything like that. A lot of, I mean, a lot of it's still new to me. Yeah. Um, you know, f- funny, like we were talking about the Stitch Down community. I popped in there and uh, I can't even remember the context of the the situation, but yeah. there's XBXS, the Chinese uh, bootmaker. Yes. And somebody mentioned that. And I was like mentioned, I was mentioned in the, in the comments somewhere, whatever it was. I honestly had no idea what that was. And I was like, what is this? Um, and, it, you know, and then a couple months later, come to find out like, oh, okay, that's like a pretty well-known. It's like one of the, I don't I think it's just a guy um, or maybe it's a small, very small team, but. Yeah, it's a small team, I think. Um, Ticho was working with them. Okay, yeah. Anyways, f- finish your thought because I, I have, I know a little bit of the back, the back story there, a little bit. Yeah. So oh, I'm, I'm curious, but like I had no idea. And so I was just like, what is, what is an XBSS? Cause I didn't even know it was like a, I didn't even know it was a brand. Like I had no idea. I thought yeah. it was an acronym for, I don't, I don't even know. And then somebody wrote back and like told me, which, which was awesome. And it's like, that's why the Stitch Jack community is great. Cause somebody's like, yeah, hey, here's, here's the story. Like, or here's, you know, about the, this is what the joke was. Uh, like, you, wall of I didn't even know it was a joke, you know? And so anyway, so they told me that and I was like, okay, like that, that's great. Like, but you know, so I'm, a lot of this is, is uh is new to me you know and especially going way like going down the rabbit hole uh like all the indonesian bootmakers how they're related yeah um japanese brands like that's something i've been like you know i don't spend a ton of time diving into them because the only time i like dive into a boot is if i'm going to make a piece of content on it and uh just want to you know just want to make sure that it's like the most up to date but Mm -hmm. like in terms of boots that when i'm scrolling on instagram or whatever uh, that just like catch my eye. I'm like, ooh, like I would say um, more and more. That's kind of getting that really like really niche Japanese yeah. makers, um, Indonesian makers. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, and, and seeing people's handmade stuff too. Like I don't yeah. know that part. Like part, I guess part of my philosophy on Boost Bar, like what I want to do is yeah. I want to I want to take people from Thursday to Red Wing. Basically, is like kind of or yeah. or even or even just like from Timberland to Thursday. So oh. if I can take people from Timberlands to Thursday. Yeah. Or, or take them from Thursday to Red Wing or, you know, like, or, or to Grand Stone or whatever. Like, yeah. that, that's just how I think about it. So that's like where I want to play because I think there's just, I want to, I want to grow the pot. And yeah. that's one thing, like I was telling you about, like, what am I, what am I doing? Like, or, or how, how I want to differentiate myself. Mm-hmm. To me, it's more like, all right, my job isn't necessarily to, to highlight all the really small bootmakers that I personally think are like amazing. Yeah. I'm more like, how do I get more people from buying boots at the mall where yeah. if they're going to get a pair of Skechers? How do I get them from not buying? How do I get them to not buy a pair of Skechers? And how do I get them to buy, you know, a so, pair of either if it's Thursday boots or if it's Grant Stones or if it's, um, you yeah. know, just like something that is higher quality that's going to get them into the into the world where yeah. then they'll start being like, oh, like, yeah, maybe I should pay attention to leather quality Oh, yeah. okay. Red Wing tans their own leathers. Like, what? What's the deal with those leathers? And start asking the what's Horror Wing Chrome Excel. Like, why do a bunch of brands mention that? Like, that's where I kind of want to play because I think there's. I just I, I want more people to be interested. I think more people should be interested in high quality boots because yeah. me personally, like when I put on a good my first like good pair of boots, there is a different feeling when you're standing on something real. Yeah. When you're standing on a piece of leather. Like yeah. with when I put on when I put on the Thursday captains, I was like, this is a big difference between this and um like what I was the best boot I had before that was a Timberland Earthkeeper. And oh. it, didn't, it didn't even fit me. Um, you know, and and when I think when I I mean I haven't worn one in a long time, but mm-hmm. when I first put on the Thursday Captain, I was like, okay, this is a definite leap in quality. And personally yeah. I had more confidence. And then when I put on the Red Wing Iron Ranger, I was like, okay, this is another leap in quality. Yes. Um and yeah. and this is like uh yeah, it's just like a cool experience and i want more people to make that transition from just wearing you know goofy sneakers to putting on a, a real pair of boots and and wearing them around even if they just stop at thursdays or whatever and stop at a 200 hundred dollar boot like yeah. whatever but i think even that is worth bridging that gap from a 70 dollar boot or a 70 dollar sneaker to a 200 hundred dollar boot i think that is a gap worth bridging um yeah. for for everyone so that's kind of i don't even know how we got started oh oh, oh yeah brands that i'm interested in yeah so that's where like i spend the most of my time of in terms of like okay i'm gonna present this so this is what i'm gonna deep dive on but mm-hmm. i definitely like when i see a pair of clinch engineers i'm just like yeah. dude or roll clubs like yeah. that is my that's my grow that's my grail boot is like a roll club is that a roll club engineer this is flathead um, okay but but i believe the same people that make the john lofgrins make the flathead. okay so yeah but it's basically the same thing same yeah 
They, it's just like <laughs> such a, a such a tasty boot, man. Oh, so yeah. Yeah. it's like yeah. things like that. I, yeah. I, I drool over them, but uh, you know, absolutely, absolutely. So um, yeah, just to backtrack a little bit to XBXS, there was a little bit of drama there because Ticho Blanco he was working with uh, XBXS, uh, uh, Chinese Chinese made factory doing super high quality work. In fact, Ticho was at the stitch down boot camp selling some of the XBXS stuff. Um, but a little bit of controversy arose because they deliberately knocked off some really new uh, boot release from a really high prominent maker. And uh, and it caused a lot of backlash. And Ticho sort of felt like that communal urge to like sort of bifurcate from them or separate from them. And uh, he still works with them. But um, yeah, there was a little bit of drama there because they were basically doing direct knockoffs. Now, they did create a new company called, uh, I think it's the same people called Luos Giet. I reviewed them. They basically do almost exact knockoffs of the Alden. Uh, that's the same. That's the same guy. I think it's it's the same group and or work okay. making those. And, you know, it stirs up controversy and I get comments like, why would you even cover these people? But again, like with me, my fundamental grounding is i'm just looking at the product i you know politics i throw it out the window because I, I take so much yeah. heat i support grandstone as well and they're made in china i don't mm. care what stuff's made i just care about the product i want to look at right. it get it on camera and talk about it that's that's it like politics yeah is is there um is there sort of a ethical concern when it comes to directly copying a last and a build and everything yes but lewis jet slash xbxs they're sourcing chinese leather so it's not like they're it's not like they're sourcing from Horween and using the same neocork outsole. No, they're using different materials. They're making a very similar similar model though. Um, right. So, and, but like for me, for my bags, like shoot, I, I make I make a bag, but I, I've derived inspiration from other makers. You know, yeah, yeah. It's not purely of my own. I I made it my own design, but I take fundamental elements and I create something that I would want to use. And so. Yeah. Yeah, we, we all do it. You know, musicians do it. They copy each other. They take in, inspiration from from each other. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. It's it's just make it your own. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that's the whole mm -hmm. thing. And so, yeah, th there was a little bit of a controversy there. But, you know, again, like if you want to talk about like who has dominion over the Mokto, like nobody ever said that this Wolf and Beard brand from Ukraine, we got to stand with Ukraine, by the way. <laughs> just yeah. <'cause... laughs> but um, yeah, I, I, I don't want to get into trouble, but. I, uh, yeah, anyways, um, nobody has dominion over the mock toe. Nobody's calling out Wolf and Beard for knocking off the Red Wing mock toe at right. all. So, yeah. you know, it's just one of those things. It's it's perspective and it's angle and it's oftentimes politically motivated. So, right, um, right. Yeah, unfortunately, we all have to dabble in the politics, but yeah. <laughs> that's the world we live in. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's that's pretty fascinating. I mean, I think as a maker, yeah. and I, have, I have no idea about who X, the people behind XBSS or, or even Lewis Jit are. I have yeah. no idea. But, you know, I think even for, there's a certain amount of like when you copy something, it's, it's inescapable. Like there's a certain element of like everyone just naturally, if you're going to do anything like you have to you have to like build on you're building off of something. Yes, um, exactly. So there is an element of like you're going to take parts of, of other people's stuff. Yeah, I think you want to eventually put your own spin on it just for the sake of like how can you grow or do anything mm -hmm. without without you know putting, putting your, your own spin on it because at a certain point it's like okay do i want uh, I, I you know i've heard of lewis yet and I, they make like red wings they make red wing iron rangers that are like look exact it, it looks like they just took a picture of a red wing iron ranger and say like hey we sell this but it's just called something different but it's like i'm pretty sure that's a picture of the red wing iron ranger it's but, like um, yeah. it's like at a certain point it's kind of like well you know, do I want to take the risk of like buying this boot that looks just like a Red Wing Iron Ranger, but it's like $150 cheaper or whatever? Or should I just buy a Red Wing Iron Ranger because it's a Red Wing Iron Ranger? Right. To me, it's kind of like at a certain point, like that doesn't help the brand that makes the knockoff because most people are going to be like, eh, let me just get the original, even if it costs a little bit more, like I know what I'm getting. Um, right. And from, from an actual, from an actual maker. Uh, yeah or at least from in the perspective i know these guys are act make actual boots um but yeah so like and I, I mean i think like you know honestly like um just just speaking honestly too it's like when i started boots by two i didn't know i had no idea where to start i didn't know how to i didn't even know how to make a youtube video um really i had no idea so i looked at like what was working for other people um yeah. and and took those ideas and <laughs> did them i also did those same ideas knowing that like me doing the idea mm -hmm. my own way was going to be different even if it was the same title and, yeah. and the same concept it's like 
just the very nature of me doing it and and it's not, you know i'm not like reading their the, reading the script verbatim or anything like that but it's like just yeah. the very nature of me doing it and then inserting my own opinions and stuff like that it makes it a different video it makes it a different thing yeah and then you know after a certain point though you're like okay you know you can't you can't just like let you can't just continue to do that because then you're always a step you're, you're not like a step behind but like you're always just in there you can only do it for so long yeah. before you're like okay like yeah i'm i'm well equipped enough to to just start doing you know pursuing whatever what are my strengths what am i what am i particularly good at um yeah, so. yeah definitely yeah it's it, and you know we do it in college we go to school for a purpose we we learn from industry leaders that have their expertise in the industry or yeah. whatever and we learn from them and we read their material you know when i was going through college my professors had me read their books you know and i was quoting i was writing reports quoting them basically paraphrasing their entire book and it's like yeah. that's how you have to learn at a certain point you need an instructor to teach the the apprentice and then the apprentice eventually accumulates the experience to go off in his own direction and right. just like that and, and you know thank god for youtube because man what an education we could get on YouTube. seriously seriously <laughs> like, i could i could talk about so many subjects like fluently now it's bizarre like true crime ufos you know politics international affairs I, I could delve into all of it but um my true passion is with leather and that's why my channel focuses around leather, leather and hovers around it but um you know it's not that i don't want to talk about other things it's just that uh boots are safe it's kind of a safe topic for the most yeah. part <laughs> i'm not gonna really piss anybody off talking about boots though in every community there's there's politics and and right uh, I, I know what you're saying but um but i was pleased to see you um when you reviewed some Vibergs. Now, oh, yeah, yeah. tell me about when you got into Vibergs. What was that like stepping from, at that point you had Grant Stone, you had Red Wing mm -hmm. stay, but then, then you got some Vibergs. Yeah. What let, was me, that? Uh, let me, uh, let me grab my pair. Cause I know they're, they're around. So yeah, let me, definitely. Let me, let me get my... Okay. Sounds good. All right. So I got the, the Viberg here. Ooh. Uh, I can't even remember the leather, but, uh, it, uh, this is the 310 last okay. So it's got the nice bump toe. So yeah. I, I knew I wanted to get a pair of Vibergs specifically to to review them. Um, because when you're a boot reviewer, you get to like write that off on your taxes. Um yeah, definitely. But I also, you know, like I was looking at the classic service boot, knew I had to get a service boot because that's like Vibergs, you know, that's their that's their main thing. Yes. I'm, out of, uh, oh, I'm trying sorry. to get back in focus. I don't know why I'm out of focus right now. But um, so I knew I wanted to get a pair of Vibergs. I wanted to get the service boot, but I have a lot of boots that look like that, you know, already. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, I want to get something that's a little unique, or a little bit different. So I got the 310. And uh, yeah, I mean, like looking at the, the the construction, like really like looking at that stitch down, the double row stitch down, like I don't know how, I don't even know how they do that. Like, honestly, that is the cleanest double row stitch down. Cause I was used to, I mean, when I say used to, the only experience I'd had with any sort of boot that was built stitch down so far or to, to this point was, I think I had a pair of Knicks Americana. Okay. I think that was, oh, and I had a pair of whites, uh, the Packer. So like I'd seen that and that's like a different, that's a different world too. That's a very different type of boot. Um, and I actually spent, I've been to Spokane a couple of times and visited the factories, Nick's, White's uh, and JK. Um, oh, that's right. You did go to JK. You, you yeah. Some content there. Um, yeah. You didn't do it with Nick's or White's though, or? Yeah. So I, I, uh, I did a interview. I, I sat down with, with, or I went, I went, I visited the whole factory at all three factories. I visited all three. Uh, whites i just dropped in um so like it was not like a they did not host me or i mean they, the the guy um maybe his name's brand i can't remember his name the marketing manager i was yeah. just like in their shop and i was like hey can i look at the factory yeah. and they're like uh yeah i guess and so they, they walked me around which was really nice to spend the time um but like i yeah. cannot and could not ever get a hold of them <laughs> for any reason so um so you know, I I, I covered whites so I, don't, I don't i don't get to talk to anybody there i don't know why but yeah. visit the factory that was cool and like they're doing some really cool stuff in there mm -hmm. with the Knicks, and they were they like hosted me. Um, Grant, who is the previous uh, previous manager, general manager there, um, he took me out to get a sandwich. That was great. And then we went to the factory, spent some time, and met some great people there, and like saw how they do things too. That was that was awesome to yeah. see their whole their whole uh, production and um, and then yeah, and then spent a lot spent a lot of time with J.K. as well, and actually produced a video. That was um, produced a video that was like a factory tour. I did do a podcast with Nick's, but never ended up releasing it because it was kind of like, you know, kind of like we were talking about the style. 
you know, it was just, it was like us uh, on a white background and it just, it didn't feel like a boots buy video. So I was like, ah, like I, I gotta bite the bullet and, and, and not publish this like piece of content, which is cool. I might still release it private, like do a private release and, and, you know, put it somewhere on our, our Nick's review or something like that where people can watch it. Okay. Um, but I don't know that I'll like do like a release of the video. Um, just a suggestion. Um, why don't you like, if, if you're not happy with the visuals, maybe just overlay it with a picture of a boot and just let people air the listen to the recording itself maybe yeah um, yeah that might yeah. be yeah. I'll, I'll probably just like put it on the nick my like because i have a nick's review on bootsby.com so i'll probably just like make it private and then just put the link there so people if they read that review they want to see me do a 40 minute interview or whatever um something like that because i mean it, it is like cool it's cool to talk to them and um yeah. but anyway so that, that was great and then jk like went through their whole factory and uh checked them out and so that was you know that was kind of like my introduction to pacific northwest boots and just seeing how those boots are made is really, really outstanding. And I'd heard Viberg, you know, Viberg doesn't really, I mean, they're in the Pacific Northwest, but they're not, it's not really even the same. It's not the same boot. You know, it's like a different, I feel like White's, Nick's, and JK, they're all, they're pretty similar uh, yeah, in that they come DNA. from, yeah, they come from like the White's, yeah, the White's DNA. Yeah. Um, and uh, Viberg's, you know, has some similarities, but is, but is obviously like way more dressy and a lot more like refined, I think. Um, yeah. The price reflects that as well. But uh, but yeah, looking at the so so anyway, get back at what you were asking was we like blame Viber too hard. You know they are under Trudeau after all. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they uh, yeah. So I mean, my experience with Viber, honestly, like I, I so I got it for the review, um, mm -hmm. did the review, and you know there's so many boots. Like I don't end up actually wearing them all that much. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. Maybe maybe I'll have to revisit Viber. What are your favorite? Do you have do you have multiple pairs of Vibergs? Do you have the one service boot or or what's your what's your thoughts there? Yeah, I have um let's see. I had three total pairs, but now I'm only down to two. So I have okay. these unoiled shinky horse butts on the uh is this the three ten? I think it is. I forget now. That might that might be kind of kind of looks like it. Or twenty forty. This is the twenty twenty forty. Yeah, I've always wanted three ten. Um and then I have these standard brown ones 2030s nice uh, so just those two for now i do miss my color eight chrome excel mm. um, i actually sent those to mario and uh because he sent me some some com color eight chrome excel uh uh what are they called it's a uh it's an indonesian maker uh crap the name escapes me right now it, it'll come to me um but but yeah so i i felt like there was overlap there so i just sent him my color eight vibergs but i do miss <laughs> so but yeah i, I love i love the company uh Brett, he's a he's a super cool guy. Uh, I, I like that he's kind of rough around the edges. I, I like I like makers that are rough around the edges. I, I don't I, I don't like I don't always trust it when I find a maker that's like super duper like presentable and yeah, yeah. professional. It's like no, like I I got some flack when I inter interviewed uh, Vince at Truman Boots because he talks like a sailor, and it's like no, yeah. I like that. I, yeah, yeah, dude. I I had a I called him, I talked to him on the phone once for like forty minutes. He was so fun to talk to. That guy was awesome. Like also, and then, and then recently I saw he, cause he has like a farm. He like lives on a farm yeah. and he's, there's a picture of it. And it was like, the, it looked, it looked like a Renaissance oil painting where it was like the light was like shooting through the clouds. It was like beautiful yellow and like deep gray and the mountains. And there's like a cow there. I was like, dude, do you live in paradise? Like, did you, is this a picture from heaven? Like, what is this? It was uh, it, it wild. Um, That's an interesting guy. And, a lot of people don't like his personality, but man, like, like, okay, the quality of the boots speak for themselves. Yeah, like, absolutely. You want to about about the guy, but him and I are definitely on par with a lot of issues, like global political issues. And you know, after talking to him a few times, it it made me like him even more because yeah, he, he's not a sheep. He he thinks for himself. Yeah, he's, he's a cool uh, dude. Yeah, he's like um. Yeah, I, I actually like honestly, I kind of think about him often because just like he's just like a he's a man, dude. Like yeah, he just yeah, like yeah, I got cows, and then I do like I make boots, and because yeah. <laughs> also part of it is too like I have trouble. Obviously, like probably everyone knows, but like you you get commissions yeah. from helping people sell boots. So like if you do a review or whatever, and you promote a boot, uh, and then you sell you, you sell a pair, you get I don't know a certain percentage. Yeah, like he uh, does not do that. And, uh, you know, I've been asking him, like, hey, can you do that? Because, like, yeah, that's, like, what I do, you know? And he yeah. won't do it, which is fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, which, he... you know, it, it, it like, bugs me because I'm, like, come on, man, like, do it. But at the same time, like, I cannot fault him because, like, he's just a, he's just a fucking man, dude. Like, he yeah. just, <laughs> I'm, like, yeah. I don't know what to say. So, you know, he's just, like, no, I don't want to do that. And I don't, like, 
exactly i don't need you to do that and i'm like no no like no. you can't can't argue with that yeah he, he's his own man he he thinks for himself um he, he's an independent entrepreneur and you know i, I love that he's yeah. he's just got that resilience and he just doesn't give a shit he just yeah. truly he you know he's just doing what he's doing he's not he's not a politician he's not he's yeah. not just put on a show you know he's there to make boots damn it and he makes great boots he's yeah, got, they're awesome yeah, they're phenomenal awesome. taste in leather is like you did the Java wax flesh. That's like the that's the, the main one. Yeah, yeah, and for good reason. In fact, I'm wearing some whites uh, in cinnamon wax flesh right now. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah. How about you? What stupid, stupid that I missed this question. What are you wearing? I can't get my leg up there. I'm wearing a pair of Red Wing. Oh, let me. Yeah, I'm wearing a pair of Red Wing blacksmiths. Oh, so cool. I don't know, I've been loving the Red Wing blacksmith lately. I don't know what it is, but maybe it's just because it's like always there and it's kind of easy to put on. Yeah, but the pair super versatile. Yeah, so yeah. I'll say sorry. I'm, I'm like taking them off, so it looks weird. But yeah, uh, it's all good. So Red Wing Blacksmith. Yeah, it is. And uh, let's get some show some of the age. So I kicked a brick, a couple of bricks. So you know, it's it's that nice black prairie T-Core leather, right? So it looks looks good. This is just just dirt. Yeah, I don't think T-Core. But anyway, so beautiful. Big fan of this boot, and also just like looks so cool on the inside, where you get the actual natural rough out there. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, super nice, man. Been wearing that a lot, and uh, people might find I don't, I don't know if they think it's interesting. Probably my favorite, my my favorite boot, or the one that I've worn the most in the last year, probably the Westco Mister Lou. Like I've been wearing a lot of the the Westco Mister Lou. Like I just engineer boots are cool. I like yeah. them, and I think they're yes. cool. I, I'm with you 100. percent I'm so glad I got into engineers because they're just phenomenal. You just feel like a superhero when you're there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just want to kick doors open. Like I, I haven't. <laughs> When I wear the, I haven't opened a single door with my hands in in years. I just, you know, just like right, and just kick that door open. Kick that so. thing down. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I got my foot in shot in that shot right there. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. sure if I was gonna be able to pull it off, but I got I still got flexibility. We could have used you in Iraq, man. Jeez, <laughs> I kick those. Those doors. kind of moves, dude. Yeah. Um. So you want we have five minutes left before it shuts us down. Uh, you wanted to drop a conspiracy theory. Yeah. Okay. So this is the this is the debut. I'm gonna try and do it quick. Yeah. Um, which by the way, also if we want to go till 10, if you if oh. if, if we can kind of do it, yeah. we can go till 10 because I, I don't have to be anywhere till 10. So. Yeah, I'm d- I'm down totally. But let's let's we let's give the people what they've been they've been asking for. I know they've been asking for it, even though this hasn't been published. But let's uh let what the people want to know. This is this is groundbreaking. This is the first time you ever for everyone in the audience, this is the first time you're gonna hear this. So <laughs> all right. This is about the Karen thing. When you call someone a Karen, right? I know where this started. So I was in a taxi cab in San Francisco and there was a Russian driver and he's telling, he's like, Hey, like uh, he wanted to tell me a joke. Mm-hmm. And so he told me this joke of Khrushchev goes into a bar and he says, he looks around and Khrushchev notices there's only two people in the bar. And he says, let me order a, a round for the whole bar. And when he says that 30 people come in for a party and then the bartender pour has to pour 35 drinks and Khrushchev has to pay for them all. And the, the, the that was like the joke. Yeah that the driver told me mm-hmm. and I was like waiting for the punchline. And he was like, and Khrushchev had to pay for 35 drinks. And I'm like, yeah, that's like, th- that's how the math works. And, but yeah. I learned from a friend. I told my friend, I told a friend this story mm-hmm. and I was like, um, he, he, he had me watch a movie by the guy who did, does everybody loves Raymond. Okay. And that guy went and tried to, he made a movie called exporting Raymond, which he basically went to Russia and tried to do a Russian version of everybody loves Raymond. And what he discovered was that Russian senses of humor are very much, they don't tell jokes the way an American would tell a joke. Their jokes are really based around characters that have certain traits that they get into. So like they get into situations that are very typical of what that person, that situation, that person would get into. So for Khrushchev, this particular character, he's a, his character. And I didn't know because like, I'm not Russian, so I don't know this backstory which is why the joke was not funny at all to me, right. um, is that he's down on his luck. That Khrushchev is always down on his luck. He tries to do the right thing, but it always backfires. That is like a Khrushchev thing to do. Okay. So when he goes in the bar, he wants to order around. It's a nice thing, but then 35 people come in and he can't pay the tab. And yeah. so it, it backfires on him, right? So in Russian, that's probably a hilarious joke. Right. In right. America, not a funny joke because it's like- Yeah, there's no punchline. What, 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 no... what, like, what do you mean? There's nothing that catches so, you off guard, yeah. Exactly. So to me, and here's the conspiracy theory. Yeah. This whole thing of when Karen's came out, like when somebody was being a Karen, 
maybe yeah. in like 2020 mm-hmm. that reeks of russian humor because that's exactly what it is it's like a karen is someone with a short bob haircut who asks for the manager and complains about everything that is such a russian joke like yeah. to have a character that always does this thing so you can just look at that person and say like look at what this karen is doing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if you t- if you just like think like outside of the context like if you said like well, look what this karen is doing that would mm-hmm. not be funny at all because you're just like what does that even mean but now we have there's a backstory and we kn- everyone kind of knows what a karen is so anyway i think back in 2020 people started talking about like this person's being a karen or that person's being karen or yeah. even to a certain degree like this person's being a chad or whatever it's these stock <laughs> characters but to me that is such that it that is probably propaganda from russia getting yeah. us to to dividing us by saying like this person complaining about something or whatever is a karen and we should dismiss them and it's like a division tactic brought yeah. on by the russia because it, it it reeks of russian humor so that is my big conspiracy theory and that is why i refuse to call people a karen or a chad or do anything like that because i feel like that's what the russian government wants me to do so that's my big conspiracy theory uh, I hope I hope it's well received. If you think that's interesting, or or have never thought about that, or you have thoughts about that, leave a, a, a comment yes. in the uh, in the in the link or uh, down below. Leave a comment because I'm I'm pretty curious. That's my big theory. Like we were talking about earlier, you know, it's a little bit scary to put your babies out in uh, you know in the in the wild and see how they do. But yes. um, I'm Absolutely. I'm brave. I'm courageous. I'm putting my baby out there. I hope it's well Running received. And brave. Yeah, so. I like it. I like it. But yeah, we could all relate. You know, we've all seen the woman with the blonde streaks in her hair that demands to speak to that manager. You know, she's the soccer mom and the with the minivan. She's got all the kids. Dale, you're 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 brainwashed by Russia, man. I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. They're getting you, dude. I'm a Russian bot. What could I say? <laughs> yeah. This whole time, I didn't know you're AI generated Russian bot, dude. You're playing the long game. I'll say that. Yeah. Playing the long game. I am ethnically half Russian. Well, I'm. 25% Ukrainian and I'm 25% okay. Czech. And so okay. um, probably some of that humor does uh, just, I have it naturally through my genetics. <laughs> yeah, you just love it. You're like, yeah, heck yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Exactly. Yeah. Right, this is about to shut down on us, um, but I'll call you back in 10. Is that, yep. is that cool? Yep. And then, yeah, we'll have a good 15 minutes there. So Sweet. Cool. all right. Thanks, man. Beautiful. We got another, another tasty 15 minutes or I guess 10 minutes. So yeah, yeah. We got 15 minutes and Sweet. uh I actually changed for you. I just uh, put on my. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. My wife bought me this from uh, markdice.com. Yeah. Funny shirts. So. <laughs> That's awesome. So I figured, awesome. hey, since, since we're talking about Russian conspiracy. Hey, theory, we're there. We're there. That's awesome, man. Might as well. Uh, uh, heck yeah. <laughs> so, all right. We've talked about musicians. I was curious. One thing I wanted to ask you yep. was what kind of music do you listen to? Oh, music. Good question. Um, yeah. So, so normally I, I like a lot of synth wave. Um, okay. But uh, I don't listen to a lot of different bands. I, top of my list is going to be Incubus. Um, okay. I haven't listened to them in quite a few years. Um, I can guess when you were born. You were yeah. born 1986. 85. Very, 85. Okay. very good assessment. <laughs> yeah. That's a very Incubus age. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, it was all about Incubus in high school yeah. and even into young adulthood. And then um, I love Nirvana, I wow. love Legendary. I, I listen to all their tracks, even the obscure B grade stuff. Um, yeah. And then uh, most recently, I've been into My Chemical Romance. I know I'm a little yeah. late game on that, but like I, I really just it's so cathartic listening to that music. I don't know why it's just, I, I just, I just love the sort of screamo music, but not pure screamo. Like I also like the used, um, they yeah, do a lot of screamo too. um, so yeah, I, I'd say probably those top four. The, the only area that I get kind of exotic is with Bob Marley. I love all Bob Marley stuff. Too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's but awesome. no other reggae, just Bob Marley. Just, yeah. No other, all other reggae is just trying to imitate him and they all fall short. Bob Marley is the one. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's awesome. Yeah, that's a pr- pretty similar stuff. Like okay. uh, growing up in in Southern California, we had a lot of cool bands, and like one, my probably my favorite band is called Thrice. Uh, they're pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I have, I think I have all their albums. Actually, I was on a big oh, yeah. kick for a while. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah. them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've been to so many other concerts and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah I basically listen to music in the gym. But My Chemical Romance, I listen to them all the time too. Uh, which you know, it's really interesting. Like every once in a while, I see kids because like I'm at the YMCA. And I yeah. see kids wearing like My Chemical Romance shirts. Sometimes I feel bad for the the you know the younger generation because I'm like, mm-hmm. 
why are you guys like they're they're wearing dragon ball z shirts they're wearing rugrats shirts and they're wearing my chemical romance shirts i'm like dude get your own thing i shouldn't i shouldn't understand you guys i shouldn't understand what you like you should like things that i have no clue what it even means right right but the fact that you like the same things that i liked when i was your age yeah. this doesn't seem right you know you guys gotta rebel don't right. just, exactly. don't don't just be the same as millennials man you gotta rebel you gotta do something different but sometimes i feel bad for them because they're they just don't seem very rebellious Right, right. Well, it, it also highlights the decline in the quality of the entertainment that's come out since, you know, basically after 2000, you know, we had a golden era in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. And then unfortunately, it just the quality just started to dwindle. And, and most of the stuff coming out now is just drudge, you know, it's crap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there, there are new screamo bands and stuff like that. But it's like, yeah, you know, it's just, uh, I don't, I don't, well, I, mean, I guess I wouldn't know, but it doesn't seem... Like the yeah. best ones came out, you know, in the 2000s. That was like, that was, that was the heyday. So, right. And the fact that they're all still like touring is kind of, is kind of wild. I still yeah. coming out with albums and stuff like that. So definitely. What, what about uh, Nickelback? Do you listen to any of that? I, you know, I, I, I bought into the whole anti Nickelback thing uh, yeah. for a while. And then I was like, you know, this is why I, I, I enjoyed a few Nickelback songs. So I yeah. went back actually quite recently, like three weeks ago. And I was like, all right, I'm, I'm going to listen to Nickelback again with fresh ears and just listen to them. And uh, they actually really only, uh, they actually only have like a good song. They only have one good song. So I think a lot of that is, is actually probably justly deserved. Um, yeah. I don't know if they got, you know, I think all the love that went to Bacon, like people got really into Bacon and then they had to take from somewhere. And I think they just took too much from Nickelback. So, yeah. you know, Bacon got too much love and Nickelback got too much hate. But right. I did go right. back and Nickelback is pretty pretty average in my yeah. opinion um, they do have like one cool song that i that is cool yeah but overall I think yeah. that's my my final assessment on the on the matter i completely agree I, I i don't listen to them except they did do a cover of a of a pretty famous song and they actually did a really good job with it which shows that musically they're talented they could do yeah. good music it's just most of their stuff is just so bland i don't know it's just it's so bland. commercial yeah i don't think they deserve the hate you know like because because nickelback is like the most you know people love to hate them i don't know that they deserve all that uh, but they, they were a little bit bland, a little bit bland. So yeah, definitely. And that's another reason why I just, I hate the Foo Fighters. I just can't get it. Like, you know, Nirvana, Kurt Cobain was Nirvana and the, the guy that, uh, went on to form, uh, Foo Fighters. I just, I don't find any of it appealing. It's just sort of. Dave Grohl? You're not a Dave Grohl man? I'm not, I'm not a Dave Grohl fan. No, no. I, I think, uh, I'm a big Kurt Cobain fan fan yeah. though so yeah but i have a lot of friends that are talented musicians that love food fighters so have nobody... you ever listened to queens of the stone age i think dave Grohl did uh the drums on their most popular album and it's like cool it's sick. they're good i've so... never listened to them I'll, I'll have to give it a shot it's queens of the stone age okay yeah they had a couple they were like 2003 or 2004 or something like that they had some like music videos back when mtv was still yeah i don't even know what they're doing now i don't know if the mtv still exists, but i don't know um, that's a good question i'll, I'll have to look it up <laughs> I'm not sure either. What about uh, what about beers? What what kind of beers or drink gentlemanly drinks do you get into? Yeah, adult beverages. Um, you know, I haven't drank a beer in like probably seven months or something like that. So basically, once my kid was born, I was like, dude, it yeah. takes so much willpower to like drink a beer and stay awake. So I just kind of stopped. Uh, but beer was I was very passionate about beer for for quite a long time. Uh, I think it all kind of comes back to like you know perhaps blue ribbon <laughs> like. You okay. Can go off in like so many different you know directions, and yeah. you come back and like, man, I just want like a beer that I can drink you know fourteen of. Yeah. And uh, and still feel okay. Uh, no, but yeah, uh, definitely. Well, there are some nights like that, but yeah. In terms of beers, you know, the one that I cannot do, I cannot do a, a New England IPA or the hazy IPA. Those things, man. If I drink like three of them, I will barf. I I promise you, I will barf if I drink three of them. I don't know what there's something in it. Maybe it's too. I don't know what it is, but. It's the best, beer. the best beer of all time. I will wager, in my opinion, the one that I like the most is the Anchor Porter. Anchor is a San Francisco, old San Francisco brewery. They're kind of one of the first of the the craft beer wave. They made a porter that was not popular at all. Okay, and uh, it was is like the I don't know. To me, it was the perfect beer. Also because the bottle shape. But I think Anchor is out of business. I don't think they exist anymore. Okay, they, shut down. Okay. they got bit, they got bought by a Japanese company maybe in two thousand and eighteen or nineteen. And then I think they just, they changed the branding, which like it used to look old and cool. And then they made it like modern and look super private equity. And then they just like went out. Of gotcha. Gotcha. The Porter no longer even exists. 
Oh man, yeah, I just googled him to see if I could find him, and yeah, that nothing comes up. That's yeah, that's too bad. Rest in peace, anchor anchor porter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where, where where are you based out of? Uh, and and then what what's what are the what are the big breweries around you? Uh, yeah. So we, uh, so I'm in Baltimore, uh, okay. well, outside, not not in the city. And uh, yeah, we have some Natty Bow. I think is the big brewery here. Okay. Though they're basically it's basically just Bud Light. It's not good at all. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't. I actually I'm the same way. I don't get into beer because it just makes me bloat. And uh, so I, I'm actually more of a bourbon man. I just okay okay just on bourbons and vodkas. You know, if I could up the alcohol and limit the calories and carbohydrates that's that's the best most efficient means yeah. for that's what yeah I'm, I'm a bit of a bit of a bourbon seat uh sipper um okay nice and you know obviously the sweet spotter small batch just like with boots i oh, think yeah. it always shines with the small batch <laughs> i just went to um louisville kentucky oh, okay and uh and I didn't try. I haven't, you know, again, like I said, I have adult beverages here in, in a couple months, but, uh, but there was, that was like the bourbon capital and you walk into the airport and there's bourbon ads everywhere. And like every single bar has unlimited amounts of bourbon. So I don't know if you've ever been there, but that, that could be a good visit if you're a bourbon guy. Cause they, yeah, they got it. I've never been, but I, it's definitely on my radar. <laughs> yeah. I just, I just bought a bunch of new uh, bourbons and they're all Kentucky. So <laughs> yeah. I just, you know, I thought I'd be into scotch when I was new to drinking, but uh, I don't like scotch at all. It just has that peaty, that dry taste, mm. that sort of sweet syrupy flavor that, uh, that bourbon has. I think yeah. I think it's just better in a, in all regards. So, but yeah, yeah, it's uh, I do love my drinks. Sometimes, if, if you catch me on a boot co- talk at night, I'll I'll be probably sipping on one. <laughs> yeah, Thirteen bourbons deep. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Before before we go, well, what, you're you're a leather man. Yes. What's yes. your favorite leather? Or if you could only like have one boot made out of leather, uh, you know, one one type of leather, and then you could only have one bag. And it was that same leather and a belt or whatever. I don't even know how to phrase this question, but what's your favorite leather? Like what's, you can only have one leather. What is it? Good question. One leather. Um, You know, my, this is, this is today's opinion. I'm just, <laughs> so <laughs> it might be different tomorrow, but for now I'm going to say Rambler. I love okay. nice. that Truman uses. Yeah. It's just so fleshy. In fact, I have some here. Let's see. Oh, oh. I have, I have a side of stone Rambler and, uh, horrible what they do at the tanneries they actually some guys uh spray paint um male anatomy onto here i don't know if you could see any uh, <laughs> if there's any left yeah <laughs> oh then, so that's like how they get that texture or whatever yeah yeah it's hand spray painted and and in one video uh, one of my viewers caught that yeah somebody drew a uh a, a that's male funny, but, yeah that's extremely <laughs> funny <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm a huge rambler fan so nice. um i just love the flesh out i love seeing the veining and yeah yeah it's it's like it's almost like a micro suede so it it, it well it, it fleshy so it'll have some fuzzy areas bubble up over time right like, and it's just endlessly fascinating so yeah yeah, yeah R- rambler for sure um i have a couple sides of coach coming in which mm-hmm. is more their orangish tan color and i plan to yeah. maybe make some bags out of that we'll see so how's, yeah. the, how's the bag business going how, how how is it oh good good um i, I I'm currently able to make about one bag a month. It's it's so labor intensive. Um, And I feel bad this one bag I'm working on. I've been working on it for exactly a month now, Um, but it's almost done. But uh, yeah. Tasty looking bag right there. Oh yeah. I just, I just popped it inside out. So it's, uh, but it's, it's definitely not done. I need to fasten the, uh, the straps to it still and, and uh, do all the finishing, but it's so many steps, man. It is work. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So, how about you in terms of leather like so far like what's your what's your one and done like hell yeah. chrome Excel is yeah. the is 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 just awesome like in terms if i could only do one you know i think that one that, that covers everything right like whole chrome Excel is it's a bit basic um but i love the t-core aspect that you know you you get some of that that natural tan coming through yes uh, yes uh, over time yeah. It's just such a nice, rich leather. It feels good. It smells good. It seems like you could eat it, you know, like I would, I'd eat it, you know, for sure. Yeah. Of all the leathers, I would definitely eat Horween Chrome Excel and probably get some nutri- n- nutritious value out of it. Um, There's gotta so be yeah, some. I think, I think yeah. that we'll go with that. Good, good choice. Good choice. It's a, it's a good base leather and it's high grade too. You know, people, yeah. a lot of people knock on it, but it is, I do believe it's a, it's a high quality leather for sure. Um, and yeah, it's, you know, Horween's been doing it for so long. They they know their, 
They know the recipe. They know what they're doing. Yeah. (laughs) I agree. Good pick. Good pick. Uh, Well, cool, man. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess this has been just a phenomenal talk. Thank you yeah, so much. I love that. I love that. I'd love to come back on too, whenever, when, uh, you know, yeah, a couple of weeks and, and we'll see, we'll see how this one goes, but yeah, I'd love to come back on and, and chat some more. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. I mean, I mean, you're... I don't know that we even talked about boots that much, so we could do another one where we actually talk about boots. Uh, yeah, like I'd be down or, or just keep going, you know? I... Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I think, uh, I think it's important to like talk to boot, talk about boots, keep it light, loosely structured though. Cause I do, I do like to sort of just get to know who you are. And I think the audience definitely appreciates it as well. So yeah, just, you know, understand different aspects of your personality. I think that comes through in a, in a long form discussion like this. So yeah, okay. it's been epic. So oh, I really appreciate your time and uh, thank you for having me on the channel too. And uh, this is awesome, dude. I really appreciate Absolutely. it. Yes. Yes. I thoroughly enjoyed it and uh, look forward to having you back on again here soon, my friend. Let's do it. Man. Let's do it. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much, Dale. <laughs> thank you, sir. I'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. Have a great day. Thank you. Yeah, you too. Bye. All right.